people have a lot of misconceptions about bed bugs and just about insects in general. They think that what works for one insect should work for another one, should work for another one. And that's just not the way it works. Uh, bed bugs in particular are a very challenging insect. You've already heard that from the talks this morning. But uh, they require a lot more effort and a lot more uh, strategic uh, thinking and an understanding of their biology and how to target them than do a lot of different uh, insects. So again, you're gonna be using your IPM procedures. And um, the first thing on this list is correctly identify the pest. Well, I talk to people all the time who are treating for bed bugs and they don't really have bed bugs. Do not do this. Uh, make sure that you have bed bugs because, you know, if you're, when you're treating for them, because you're wasting your money. It's uh, improper insecticide application and such. And so um, this is a display case that actually shows some of the different types of insects that people bring to me that they think are bed bugs. On this side are bed bugs. You've got your female, your male, different stages, the immatures, and your shed skins. Okay, these are bed bug shed skins. Look right here. These are carpet beetle shed skins. This is a carpet beetle. Uh, superficially, it looks a lot like an immature bed bug. I can't tell you how many times people bring in what they think are bed bugs, and they're not bed bugs. Um, so, small cockroach nymphs, they will be in the same location sometimes as bed bugs. And to the, to the um, inexperienced person, they will think that those are, are uh, bed bugs. Um, sometimes you get stored product beetles and people think those are bed bugs. And then I can't tell you how many times people bring in these giant, big um, brown marmorated stink bugs. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if you think that's a bed bug, we're in a world of, of, of hurt because <laughs> look at the size of a real bed bug. Imagine that bug trying to suck your blood. <laughs> uh, this is... A, this is actually a close relative of bed bugs, but it sucks out plant juices instead of blood. So uh, make sure that you really are dealing with bed bugs and that you're not dealing with one of these other household pests. Um, okay, big no-no is using bug, bug bombs. Do not use bug bombs when you have bed bugs they will actually make the problem worse. And uh, the idea is that when the little fine particles of chemical fall on the a bed bug, it irritates their skin and they scatter. So I talk to pest management people all the time and they say, oh, I walked into that place and there were bed bugs everywhere. And they used a bug bomb. Well, the bug bomb, instead of just having the bed bugs in your bedroom where you would expect for an early infestation, they're now in the bathroom, they're in the kitchen, they're in the living room. You have literally scattered the bugs. Um, there was a study done years ago, and that was the same thing with cockroaches. Uh, in apartment complexes, if there was a unit that had cockroaches, the next door unit would have cockroaches after the bug bombs were used, even though it didn't have them before. So um, few of the bugs will be killed, and bug bombs in general do not work well against crawling insects. They work better against flying insects, not crawling insects. Um, we published this paper uh, back in uh, 2012 on ineffectiveness of bug bombs. And uh, these were the products we actually tested. The Hotshot Bed Bug and Flea Fogger that says, kills on contact, effective long-term control. Now, they wouldn't lie to you, would they? Nobody would, would lie to you with their claims. Um, kills on contact, um, kills on contact. 
Um, these two products are not, uh, the bed bugs aren't listed on the label, but this one, even the, the name bed bugs are listed on, in the name itself, and they're definitely listed on the label. In some states, you can't use a product unless the bug is on the label, but in Ohio, you can if the site is on the label and the site is indoors. So we did tests with bed bugs out in the open in, um, we, we put them in uh, kiddie pools in, and in a building that was going to be torn down on OSU campus where we could close the doors, let the, the foggers go off, and then come back and count the uh, number of bugs. And the bugs, almost 100% of them were still walking as if nothing had happened to them after using these three products. We tested thousands and thousands of bugs. We looked at nymphs, we looked at adults. Um, and then we used a population that's called Harland. It's actually been reared in the lab since the 1970s, so it's kind of a throwback to what bed bugs used to be like that were susceptible to pyrethroids. And if we put the bugs under a thin piece of fabric, they weren't even affected by the uh, um, chemical. It wouldn't penetrate into harbages. But what you do is, when you use these products, is you, apply, you leave insecticide residues all over. They're not long lasting, but you're contaminating lots of, of uh, surfaces. Another big problem is that people don't turn off uh, flames and they blow up their house and, and uh, you know, here it's getting close to Christmas and they, they have their house totally uh, blown up. So they, they are very, very uh, flammable. Um, people don't think, oh, a water heater pilot light. It's a flame. Okay, maybe I should turn that off before I, I set off these uh, bug bombs. So after our, our, we published our paper, um, the reason, one of the big reasons was I wanted to give the data to EPA to say, okay, here are data showing that the products don't work. Um, and because they had said, oh, we can't do anything about bug bombs unless we have data. So I gave them the data and they were like, we will take it under advisement. Um, and they're still advising about it uh, years later. But Alaska um, in 2013 came out and said, it, we are not gonna allow the sale of bug bombs if they say bed bugs on the label. So good for Alaska. Nobody else has uh, got, gone to the extent of saying, you know, here we have a product on the market that doesn't work very well, if at all, and that uh, it's actually making matters worse. Um, I think it drives resistance a, a lot. Um, okay, another big no-no. Don't use these ultrasonic repellent devices against bed bugs or any other insect or any other ro a rodent or anything. My own father bought these things. I was about ready to kill him. I was like, Daddy, what are you doing? Okay, so. This paper came out um, on how they are ineffective against bed bugs. So I was at one house doing bed bug work, and here is your ultrasonic uh, repeller. So I pulled it out, turned it over, and what do I see? Those cockroaches have gone and pooped on it, and they have even shed their skins and there are bed bugs all around in the vicinity. So it's doing a fabulous job repelling uh, uh, the bed bugs and the cockroaches and, and such. The uh, Federal Trade Commission about every 15 years comes out and does a big, re uh, 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 what, what do you call it, takes them off the market, sanctions against them and, and such, and, uh, but they're back and they're ripping off a lot of, of people when Every scientific study out there shows that ultrasonics are not useful for any type of, of insect and they don't work against rodents either. So don't misapply insecticides. Uh, don't apply insecticides to your skin, to clothing, to bedding, to bed linens and such. The label is the law. 
and it would read the label when you are applying any pesticide. I don't care if it's from the corner store or you bought it from a, um, a local company that is selling pesticide uh, products to pest control companies. But it's a, it's a violation of federal law and it's there to protect you. So this is what I see. And uh, this is from Columbus, a local uh, a pest control company in uh, Columbus sent me these uh, pictures. Look at this. This is pesticide misuse. Here's your purse with dragging into the chemical. Here's the actual chemical. It's in your kitchen like this. This is misapplication. Uh, these are pictures that I, I took when I'm out as well. Misapplication. And you know, people are, are like, okay, we're gonna put it all at our door in the apartment so because bed bugs aren't coming in this way. <laughs> well, this too is, is misapplication. Window sills, they don't come in through the window and, and such. But um, when you're using uh, pesticides, when you're using dust products, like Jeff mentioned, they can be very effective. But you use a, a bulb duster like this, and you put them in out of the way locations. You don't want to be breathing in all of those dust particles because they are going to irritate your lungs, they're going to irritate your throat, they're going to irritate your eye, your mucous membranes and, and such. So you wear a face mask when you're applying them and you wear, he doesn't have gloves, he should have gloves on, and you use this little puffer and you puff it in out of the way places like inside your electrical sockets. Uh, Jeff mentioned this product, uh, Cymexa, um, but it's very, very lightweight, easily becomes airborne. And so it's best left in the hands of a professional who will be uh, applying that product. Now, a lot of people like to use uh, diatomaceous earth, DE, and Jeff mentioned that as well. Well, with DE, you cannot let it get wet. If it becomes wet, the product clumps, it never reconstitutes, and it loses 100% effectiveness. So what does this mean? Where you apply it, you don't put it in your bathroom and kitchen and such, or you don't wet mop in an area where you've got the uh, DE because you're just rendering it ineffective. You don't spray an insecticide on top of it because you've rendered the DE in ineffective. So don't allow it to become damp, don't allow it to become wet, and again, put it in out of the way places. Um, for those of you who have used it, have you noticed whenever you're putting it out, your eyes start itching, your nose uh, becomes irritated, sometimes your throat becomes irritated? That's because it's having an effect on you as well as the insects. So. I don't care what the, the label says, you still want to protect yourself and you want to protect against uh, inadvertent exposure. Buying grocery store sp sprays um, is, is not an effective way to uh, eliminate bed bugs. If you read the label in tiny print, or sometimes in larger print, it's going to say kills on contact. What that means is the liquid spray, it, when it's a liquid, kills the bugs. When it dries, there's nothing there that is working to kill the bugs. And you're not going to kill most of the bugs. Most of them are hiding. And when it dries, like I said, there's no long-lasting uh, activity. Um, don't attempt do-it-yourself heat treatments by just raising the temperature of your home. Same thing with cold. Don't attempt a cold treatment by opening the windows and let it become freezing in, inside. Cold is not very effective against bed bugs. Um, cold has to be like a shock of cold. It has to be or it has to be very, very sustained. So I have people who bring me bed bugs from their refrigerator, and they will say, 
oh, I've got these in a bag and I'm sure they're dead. And I'll say, oh, just let me have them. I'll bring them back to the lab and check them out. And by the time I get back to the lab, they're crawling all over in the bag. You know, there's this Lazarus effect where they died and now they've come back to, to life. Well, they never died in the first place. Um, with your professional heat treatment, you are looking at a six to eight hour process. Now, in Jeff's talk, he said you want that once the temperature comes up, once it comes up to temperature, you keep it for three hours. How long do you think it takes to come up to temperature? Several hours. So you add several hours to come up to temperature, you hold it for three hours, now you're looking at six to eight hours. Uh, it is a long process. It, and raising the thermostat, I talk to people who do this, and they just have high electric bills and bed bugs. So they have two problems instead of, of one. You will never get the temperature up deep inside the sofa, inside the wall voids and such by trying to raise the temperature. And you're never gonna get it low enough and sustained enough but with um, cold. So another big no-no, don't throw away your bed or other infested furniture when you find out that you have uh, bed bugs. Um, I had, a, uh, had developed this sticker and uh, it was in Spanish as well as English and uh, I found that it was supposed to be put on infested items, but people were actually putting it on dumpsters uh, instead of just the items because so many people were throwing away bed bug infested items. Um, whenever you have bed bugs in a piece of furniture, you have to wrap it before you try to move it. Otherwise, the bugs will fall off. Furthermore, before you ever wrap it, you need to destroy it because somebody is gonna see it out on the street and they're gonna say, looks better than what I have at home. I'm gonna bring this home with me and trade out for my old one. Well, they're bringing home a better sofa, but they're also bringing home hundreds of bed bugs at the same time. So getting the community to recognize that uh, curbside furniture is potentially bed bug infested is something that we really need to, to try to bring home. Um, furthermore, what do we say about where bed bugs hide? It's not just the mattress and the box spring. Um, so whenever you bring back, when you buy your replacement mattress, some of the bugs are behind the picture on the wall. They come down and infest your brand new mattress and box spring. So you can throw away a lot of money just trying to uh, keep up, up with the bed bugs by buying replacement furniture. And it, it's, it's insane. It's not an effective way to eliminate your bugs. Um, and you know, you're really spreading the problem uh, unless you're extremely, extremely uh, thorough in ripping up the furniture and making sure that nobody else wants to uh, bring it home. Um, I also talk to people who are moving to leave behind bed bugs. Don't do this. Um, chances are that you will not escape the bed bugs. You are going to have some of the bugs hiding in your items, whether in backpacks or suitcases or your furniture or luggage or clothing, and you've left behind an infested property, you've brought the bed bugs to another property, and so you've just spread the infestation. So uh, wait until the, you can have the um, treatments done and have the bed bugs under control or take every one of your items and put it into a heat chamber so then you can know that, okay, I am, I've cleared everything. I can now move into this new residence and not bring bed bugs with me. You, you know, the chances of you taking bed bugs are very, very high. Uh, it, it takes, you know, incredible discipline not to bring bed bugs with you when you have an infestation in your home.
And like I said, you know, just you know, taking one piece of item like your your a piece of luggage that has eggs on it and all the stages, you'll start another infestation uh, all over again. Um, people want to move out of their infested bedroom to another room. This is not a good practice because uh, bed bugs will move. They will try to find you and you will spread the infestation in your uh, residence. Rather, what you want to do is try to disinfect the bed to the extent possible, put the interceptors under the bed legs, and then keep staying in, the, in that room where the bed bugs are more likely now to get trapped in the interceptor and they're being drawn to you as a host in that bed. Whenever you move to the living room and start sleeping there, oh, but I keep the door closed. Uh, well, they, they have other ways to get out of, besides going through the door like, like we do, and they will find you. They, they are incredible at searching out a host using cues that we can't even tell, like heat and uh, body odor and carbon dioxide. So uh, another thing is, you know, for in, in apartments, oh, uh, I'm just gonna wait them out. I'm just, they're, they're gonna eventually die. Um, well, um, I, sh I showed this uh, paper, you know, they can withstand starvation for long, long periods. And this study was done at 79 to 80 degrees, and they were living for two weeks to over a month at the first stage for three, four months at, as adults. Well, if I move that temperature down to 60 or so, now they're gonna live even longer because they, they like a bear. They go into hibernation, slow down all their metabolic processes and can live for even longer periods of, of time. Okay. Don't assume that because you have red itchy bites that it was caused by bed bugs. Uh, th this is the, uh, the, the terminology that doctors would use. They call it semicosis, and it ranges all the way from flat spots to uh, skin elevations to confluences of these uh, skin elevations to wheels to uh, blood fill blisters so that all kinds of reactions and a doctor can only say maybe it was bed bugs. It is some type of insect that you are having a reaction to. The only way they can say specifically bed bugs was to see the bed bugs crawling on you or for you to have brought some, a sample from your house or pictures from your house. Um, to say, yeah, you really, we have confirmed that you have um, bed bugs. Now, they rarely occur on the palms of the hand. They rarely occur on the soles of the feet. They usually don't occur between the webbing, between your fingers. Um, things like that, you think scabies mites. You don't think bed bugs. Uh, um, and I've been in people's homes where doctors are giving them ointments and such for the bed bugs. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, they, they haven't even diagnosed it as bed bugs. It's for scabies. And I'm like, you don't have scabies. You have uh, uh, bed bugs. And any sort of cream like that is not going to be effective against the uh, bed bug. OK, now, you all know this, but I'm going to say it again. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. Um, natural products, uh, Jeff mentioned these. Um, a lot of the sites will say, oh, we are so safe that we aren't regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency. What they don't say is the Environmental Protection Agency doesn't regulate us at all. Nobody regulates us. So um, they will have uh, cust satisfied customers. How do you know that satisfied customer wasn't the mother of the owner of the company or the brother of the owner of the company or their uh, investor? Uh, um, Look at the data. Make sure it's been uh, an independent uh, research lab, a university that has no vested interest. Um, the botanical products often have a strong odor. And once they dry, they have very limited, typically very limited residual activity. Now, 
The EPA does say that if you're going to bring a natural product onto the market, you have to meet this condition. You can't have any false or misleading claims. But if you do, what's going to happen? Well, I don't know. Nobody regulates. So uh, um, then, uh, but however, the Federal Trade Commission did step in, and uh, a couple of years ago, they took action against two bed bug uh, products for uh, false claims, um, for unsupported uh, claims, and there are many, 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 many bed bug products on the market. So they tried to use these as an example. We, we could come after you, but um, there are lots of products out there that aren't, aren't that uh, effective and still are, are there. Uh, this is a paper that uh, Jeff mentioned where uh, Rutgers did a study showing that the uh, Eco Raider uh, did and Bed Bug Patrol of the various natural products that those were the two that had the, m the best effects of the natural products. But they were much lower than the products that the pest management industry could uh, buy. So, uh, you know, there are lots of, of things to consider when you're looking at the internet. Uh, typically, your university extension websites will have useful information. Um, I'm strongly involved in Central Ohio Bed Bug Task Force. We have this uh, website with lots of information. So uh, in just a brief amount of time, I, I did want to give you some information uh, and kind of reinforce using these multiple uh, approaches. And I have time for uh, some questions, and I'll be happy to try to entertain those.